so hello everyone now in this question it is given that an infinitely long thin cylindrical shell has its axis coinciding with z axis and it carries a surface charge density sigma not cos phi where phi is polar angle and sigma not is constant and we have to find the magnitude of the electric field inside the cylindrical shell so here surface charge is varying charge is given you have to find the electric field so in this question we will apply coulomb's law and superposition principle so this is the application of coulomb's law and superposition principle and superposition principle so we have a very long very long cylindrical shell and let's consider cylindrical axis is z axis its sigma is given sigma not cos phi where phi is polar angle now we will consider this radius to be r so let's consider we will consider a a long wire that is very thin over this cylindrical surface so this width is i am taking this width to be dl and in this charge is it's and what will be its charge per unit length charge per unit length is d lambda charge per unit length is d lambda and d lambda you can calculate if i assume this length is l where l tends to infinity so total charge in this is given by what that is given by dq is d lambda into you should multiply with its length so that that is dq and in terms of charge per unit area what will be area of this if this is sigma is charge per unit area so the area of this strip is length l width dl length l width dl so this l will cancel out and d lambda is simply sigma into dl so this d lambda is given by sigma into dl where sigma is given so and we have to assume this is x y plane and this is the z direction so we will first find electric field due to this elemental strip so we know that field due to infinite wire what will be field due to infinite wire this is field due to infinite wire infinite wire so i am taking field due to this is i am considering this segment only a strip any strip in this segment so let's see that field is de1 so that magnitude of de1 is given by d lambda by 2 pi epsilon 0 r where is r is this length r distance away from the infinite wire this is the electric field and this d lambda can be written as sigma dl so this is sigma not cos phi and dl dl we can write as r d phi dl will be r d phi and this is 2 pi epsilon 0 r why dl is r d phi because you have to consider if this is r this angle is d phi so this width is r d phi so we can write magnitude of field d e1 is sigma not by 2 pi epsilon 0 into cos phi d phi 
because sigma naught is cos phi and cos phi is varying in the range 0 to 2 pi. So if you see its circular cross section, let's draw this circular cross section and we have to see its variation of charge over it. So if you consider this as a x direction, this is y and here we have to find this radius is r. So for this phi is 0, here phi is pi by 2, here phi is 3 pi, uh, pi, this is pi and here phi is 3 pi by 2. So if you see cos phi value, this variation will be positive. Here this variation is in this range is negative. In this range also cos is negative. Here cos is positive. So we have considered here this segment, first segment and we have find the some elemental length dl over this and we have seen that this direction is let's say this is segment 1 and this is segment 2 this segment is 3 and this segment is 4 so this angle is phi so this angle is also phi because this charge is positive so electric field is away from the positive charge so this will be de1 and if you consider with same symmetry if you consider some elemental length here, so DE3 will be also in the same direction. So DE1 and DE3, their magnitude is same and direction will be same. Similarly, if you consider some segment here, so this will give you DE4 and you have DE2 also in same direction. So DE2 and DE4, because this positive charge, so DE4 in this direction, this is negative, so DE2 in this direction and this angle is also phi. So we have to find resultant of all elemental length over this circle and if you resolve DE1, DE2, now there will be two components that is cos phi component, all are cos phi component that will be in this direction. So they will add, cos phi component will add up. And if you see component in this direction, so resultant along y direction will be zero. So in this direction, they will, they are in the opposite direction. So resultant in y will be zero. So there will be net resultant field will be in the x direction. So because we have to find the magnitude, so if you consider all segment DE1, DE2, DE3, DE4, so resultant field is given by resultant field is DE, if I am writing the magnitude that is given by 4 DE1 cos phi. Why I am taking 4 DE1? Because magnitude of DE2, DE3 and DE4, they are same. So this will be 4 DE1 cos phi. So resultant field, if you have to find what we will do, we will write 4 and this will be sigma, sigma naught by 2 pi epsilon naught common and here you will get cos square phi cos square phi d phi and phi will be 0 to pi by 2 because we have considered segment separately and for one segment limit will be 0 to pi by 2. So for four segment we have multiplied here 4 but limit you have 0 to pi by 2. So this will give you sigma by you have uh, this will be let's write it as 4 times sigma by 2 pi epsilon naught 0 to pi by 2 and that will be 1 plus cos 2 phi by 2 and d phi. So resultant field is 4 sigma by 
2 pi epsilon naught. If you integrate this, what you will get 1 by 2 phi plus sine 2 phi by 4 limit 0 to pi by 2. So, sine, sine pi is 0, sine 0 is 0. So, this term will be 0 and this will give you 4 sigma by 2 pi epsilon naught. So, this will give you pi by 4. So, this 4 will cancel out, pi will cancel out, you will get sigma by 2 epsilon naught. So, magnitude of the field inside along the z axis at any point z axis, if you calculate, that will be sigma by 2 epsilon naught. So, from the given option, if you see, so correct option is B because magnitude is sigma by 2 epsilon naught.